on Sunday during the Spark Worship service, I shared some of the things that make me happy. What's on your list? What are those things that make you happy? And what are those things that don't make you happy? I know we all have those lists. Some of the things on my happy list are the Broncos, even if they lose by one point and fumble twice at the goal line. Some of the other things that make me happy, animals or babies. I can always look at them and crack a smile. I love humor. I love all things that are colorful and bright. I love being able to hang out with family and friends, but I also love those quiet moments where I can just sit and color and have nothing else going on. And if you paid attention really well, if you know me or you've seen me on Sunday mornings, you know that I usually have in my hand a large iced vanilla chai tea latte. There is something about this drink that brings me happiness every morning, even though mornings are on my not happy list. I just love to drink this. It feels like a cup of happiness for me, but the problem is that the more I drink it, the emptier it becomes until finally my cup of happiness is empty. You see, we have this thing in our society. Well, actually it's deep inside each of us, this, this yearning for happiness. But see, the thing that we are yearning for, we can never obtain. We keep searching for those things that make us happy. And so we overindulge or overeat. We're looking constantly for, you know, that latest gadget that might bring us some happiness, that shiny new thing, those experiences that will leave us with happiness. And yet what we find out is that when we actually have those things, after a little while, that cup of happiness becomes empty and we are left again searching for that next thing to bring us happiness. We are talking about joy over these next few weeks using Paul's letter to the Philippians as that place for us. It's often referred to as the letter of joy because there is so much rejoicing in it. And the funny thing is, is that you don't see the word happy as you read this, you see joy. See, there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is temporary. Happiness is a mood or a feeling, but happiness can go away just as quickly as it came. But joy, Joy is something that is much deeper, much harder to find. But once you have it, this deep well inside of you will carry you through. Joy comes from a space of hope, a space of love, a space of knowing that God sees you and is with you no matter what happens. So Paul starts off with his letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. You see, Paul was imprisoned. There wasn't a lot of happiness in prison, in jail, under the watchful eye of his captors. And yet Paul had something deep within him that carried him through. Paul had this deep joy, the joy of knowing that other people were praying for him, the joy of knowing that other people were still sharing the gospel of the good news of Jesus with others, of knowing that he was never alone for Christ was always with him in that jail cell, no matter what came. 
So how do we find that joy in our lives? Well, I keep thinking about the people who are joyful. Do you, anybody come to mind when you're thinking about joyful people? I know over the years, I have met several different people who have just exuded this sense of joy. That no matter what came in their lives, even during the hardest times, that there was this joy that just kind of was a presence that came off of them. That when you walked into the room, you couldn't help but be filled with this joy yourself because they exuded it so much. And I often wondered, where does that joy come from? How do you find that joy? One of the people that taught me so much about joy and somebody who many in our congregation know um, was Jean Parker. Jean was a staple, a, a foundation in our congregation for years. She was a part, a crucial part of the choir. She was a crucial part of a lot of small groups of that earlier church that was on Main Street and then moved. Her sister Ruth Wills, her husband Bob Parker, those are some of the people that we know still today. But I didn't ever get to meet Jean in the church or get to meet Jean when she was full of life and um, vivaciousness working within the, the choir and within the congregation. I met Jean in a hospital bed. I'd gone there for a pastoral care. Someone had called and told me that Jean would love a visit. And I walked into that hospital room knowing that she was not feeling very well. <laughs> Many of us have been there. And when I walked into that room, what I experienced from the very beginning was pure joy. If you knew Jean, you remember that smile that just lit up the whole room and just um, impenetrated into your life and you just couldn't help but smile back. And when you talked with Jean, you know that she was filled with joy, that she was grateful for every moment that she had, for every encounter that she had, for just a simple hello and somebody to see her. And even though she wasn't a part of our congregation because of her health, for the years that I knew her, every time I went and I visited her, she was full of joy. And she was full of joy and reflected these words from Paul, where she gave thanks for the congregation, for the people that she knew was continuing on to share that love and grace of God with others. Every time I was with Jean, I was reminded of God's great presence in my own life. You see, Jean had that deep hope within her, that hope that carried her through, that hope that knew that God would never leave her no matter how dark her days were, no matter how hard life was. And you could count on that smile from Jean, even in her last days. Now for me, it's not so easy. For me, when I'm going through hard times, hard spaces, it's really hard for me to live in a space of joy. So I have to work. I have to choose joy in those moments. I have to remind myself that God is there with me, that there is this hope that is there always carrying me through. And sometimes I have to remind myself by just slowing down and being present, by going outside and feeling the warmth of the sun on my face, of noticing the birds who are singing and working around me, of being able to look into someone's face and see a smile. Those are tangible ways that I can see God at work and know that deep down God is with me. I can hold on to that hope that can fill me with joy. There's this great hymn that was written by Gordon Light. And the lyrics go like this. Joy comes with the dawn. Joy comes with the morning sun. Joy springs from the tomb and scatters the night with her son. Joy comes with the dawn. Weeping may come. Weeping may come in the night when dark shadows cloud our sight. 
Sorrows will turn, sorrows will turn into song and God's laughter makes us strong. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and give praise to the one who brings us grace. Joy comes with the dawn. You see, as a resurrection people, as a people who have been witness to Jesus' death and then resurrection, we know that no matter how bad things get, that there is always a dawn coming for us. There is always a resurrection moment. And being able to stay in that hope that remembers that Jesus has walked these, these same steps that we're going through, that Jesus never leaves our side, that is where we can find that deep joy that comes from within, that joy that knows no bounds. So how do you find the joy in your heart when things aren't going the way you want or things are hard? How can you tap into that deep well that is down inside of you that can help you find the strength to keep going, the strength to hope for the dawn, the strength to exude joy that goes out into the world and spreads wherever you go. I pray that at the next couple of weeks as we continue with this letter to the Philippians, that you will find joy, joy in the everyday moments, joy in the blessed moments, and even joy in the hardest moments that you have, to, you have to face and walk. I pray that that joy will, will exude from you, that you'll be able to rest in it, and you'll be able to know that there is hope and love that is always there for you in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.